Space between. Hello, everyone. Just wanted to make sure that the wasn't blocking my face on the phone on the camera angle. Very good. But I'm, how about you? Probably won't block you, huh? Who cares? I care. If your face is here, would it block it? Do you think? Probably not. You just want to get up again, huh? Well, how am I gonna? I'll, I'll do it now. I'll do it. This is podcast. This podcast is a fucking mess. <laughs> We need a studio. Perfect. You should have known that, you know? I said it's fine. <laughs> but when Amy says something is fine, it means I don't want to do something extra, you know? <coughs> is that true? Satisfactory, yeah. So, um, how do we start? Yeah! <laughs> Welcome to the Space Between Podcast, where we talk about the space between life and art, passion and business, what's happening now, and what the fr is happening next. It's Pat Shem. Boop, boop. I'm Amy Shand. Oh, be careful. Of what? You're going to spill your coffee. Um, on what? Everything. <laughs> oh. um, hello, everyone. <laughs> um, let's see. Zach O'Connor, a dear friend, is here. Zach says, good afternoon. Perfect thing. Just got home. No, perfect timing. Now I can relax. Oh, I, oh, I can't fucking read. Uh, can you not read or you can't see? Both. <coughs> Just okay. got home. Now I can relax and watch. Congrats on another successful Kickstarter. Thank you. And you know what, Zach? Thank you. I um, I don't talk about the Kickstarters enough on the podcast because I, um, you know, try to make the podcast funny and fun and light, and I feel bad asking for money on the kicks on the podcast. But the truth is, when this podcast drops, we will have one day left of our Kickstarter. And you might have heard a bit, a bit of Superman in my voice, as I said, one day. In Re a world. In a world, really. I was swallowing a, a burp. Okay. Very good. That, one, that epic one day was a, a gas being swallowed down my throat, okay? Thank you for sharing. <laughs> there it is. There it is. In, it's it back up, though. Um, yeah. It's for a book series called Destiny New York. Uh, this is volume four. I've been writing this since 2016. And if you missed out on any of the series before, you can go back on the Kickstarter. Uh, the the link will be in the comments of the YouTube video in the SoundCloud audio once this drops. And yeah, please check it out. Uh, we are, be, beyond being a podcast, we also publish books. And this is one that we're quite proud of. And I'm excited about that. It's exciting, yeah. Congratulations. Oh, hello, my love. Hello. Do you like when I add pressure to your chest like that? Yeah, it's fine. Sometimes I'll just reach over it and I'll be like. It reminds me of when we're in the car and we stop too fast at like a red light. Yeah. And I'll be like, and then you'll do it too if you're driving. That makes me feel good because uh, I was once in a relationship where we were driving, right? And and this was with, with a woman, okay? Yeah. Um, she was in the driver's seat and I was in the passenger seat as I prefer scrub life, you know? And uh, she. When we reached a stop, reached over to me and blocked me. And I vocalized that that meant something to me because that reminded me my mother does that as a caring gesture. So it touched me that someone who was not my blood and someone that I'm in a relationship with would, would do that, right? Mm -hmm. And you know what she said? She said, oh, that's just instinct because I usually have my school stuff there. I have to block it from it's the phone It's not her over. school stuff. Oh, I know what. Listen, you're, I I get it. Okay, I changed school he was stuff. Trying to change facts to remain anonymous to not make it. Uh, okay, it's fine. You you fucking you doxed no, me. No, I thought you remember. I thought you didn't remember this. No, story. I remembered it. I'm just I'm ahead of you. You know you doxed me. Okay. Whatever. You know, you know doxes. I've heard that before. You fucking doxed me. Okay. I'm sorry, I didn't mean to. Do I, that. I actually doxed this once before. I put um. Amy drew a beautiful picture of our road trip, and it, it had the address of our previous place and current place. I just took a picture of it and put it on social media. I'm like a fucking idiot, uh, you know? He's like, look at this nice gift. Wow. Me, the fool, you know? Well, I just returned the favor, so. I think it was Jeff Massey who uh, 
Lana. Well, look, hey, uh, your both of your addresses Luckily. are on Lana right now. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um. So how are you today? Good. I got a new tattoo this week, and it's now it's itching because it's like three days old. Are you scratching it? I'm not scratching it. I feel like you are right now. I'm not using my nails. I'm just like rubbing it. That's scratching though, you know? No. That, that's what they call a soft scratch. Are, are you showing it to the camera? No. I Wait. can't. I'll put a picture in. Sure. It's on my social media too. No one looks at that though. It'll be right. <laughs> oh. It'll be right here. So what's new? Just call me Thanos. I do. I have a list. Uh, you know, <laughs> I have a list of videos and topics for us to discuss and react to. Cool. But you, uh, Amy woke me up this morning. Um, I'll say this. Two ways that you woke me up, okay? One, you seemed excited to podcast. Mm-hmm. Two, you were a little rude, okay? <laughs> it's because I was irritated at the cats. That's how it happens. Um, and you remember when I... Ooh, I roasted you so hard. You remember what I said? No. Hoyt, one of our most angelic cats, right? He was above us, and he was uh, he was rustling a paper, right? Amy had got up to smoke marijuana, oh, yeah, I and I was in bed trying to get a few more pre- precioso minutes of sleep, right? And Hoyt was above, and he was chewing and rustling a piece of paper above me on the bed head, and... It was sound wise about a four, mm-hmm. and then Miss Fucking Ten over here comes in. Oh, it's because he woke me up with that shit, and oh, I didn't. She said that's not what I did. I said ahoy like that because I was sitting on the floor. And you remember, you remember what I said to you? That I I fucking roasted you. You said uh, I'm louder than Hoyt. I said that you're so much louder than Hoyt mm-hmm. is the issue. <laughs> One person sleeping, and that person made the judgment that you. Were louder than what we yell at Because he pisses me off sometimes. In the morning, oh my gosh. They get so like, they each do different things. Neil will, like when it's time for like they want to eat breakfast, yes. Neil, he'll yell. He'll just, like yowl and yell and meow. Yes, correct. Chi Chi will like chew on everything, chew on cardboard, and it makes noise, and it's annoying. And then Hoyt will, like, barrel from one place to another, and I'll be like, doof, 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 doof. Yeah. And he'll try to knock things off the shelf. Oh, big time. And, and he'll rustle paper, too. Mm-hmm. Um, Odo will not do much. Yeah, he'll just wait. And then as soon as he knows that the food's actually coming, then he gets excited. Yeah. And he starts, like, yelling. He starts to yell and hit other cats. Yeah. Yeah. He's crazy. Yeah, yeah, he starts yeah. to bully them. Yeah. That's how excited he gets. It's true. He starts smacking him around a little bit. So listen, today, I decided since we've been just talking about stuff, don't read the topics though. I want to surprise you, okay? Mm-hmm. Um, since we started to just uh, have episodes where we're just sh- we're just shooting the shit, you know? Um, this one, I wanted to react to a few videos and just, um, you know, maybe make some uh, topics out of these. Some of these I pulled from other podcasts. Some I um, uh, got on the website World Star Hip Hop, and listen, that's an addiction of mine. I don't, I don't recommend people go there. Um, I've seen stuff I'll never forget there. This isn't an ad for them. In a in a negative way, I've seen stuff I'll never forget there. But I've also seen hilarious stuff, and I've I, I've seen butts. <laughs> Yeah, you're my world star uh, filter because I never go on there. Remember yesterday? This is um actually yeah. Chime in. I, w- I want to hear if you guys have relationships like this. Um, yesterday, Amy and I were in the car, and she pointed out a girl with a very um how 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 can I say her the shape of her body was quite equine. You know, um she had it, it, it she looked like a centaur with only two legs. You know, <laughs> she had a big. Bottom half. So like J Lo. And that yeah, that's um I'll say this. I'll put it lightly. I like that. Okay? <laughs> and Amy, uh, she pointed it out to me. She said, Look she said, look at those pair of cheeks, she said. <laughs> no, I didn't say that. I first of all, here's what happened. I was driving, first I see this Doberman Pincher dog, and I was like, Oh, that's a sick dog. Then I follow the leash of the dog, and I'm like, oh, that's a hot girl. So then, Pat... Doesn't that make you gay? (laughs) Yeah. So then Pat, (laughs) 
he like looked at me and I thought he might have been wondering what I was looking at or he we were just in the middle of conversation or something and I was like taken aback so I was I like hopped out of the conversation really quick I was like oh that girl has a nice dog and a nice butt <laughs> and you were like oh yeah she does First, I had to look to find her because I'm not the best at observing stuff. Yeah. Amy will also... Sh- will but it was her cute dog that really caught my attention. I don't, like, go around scanning for butts. <laughs> I mean, but you'll notice them. Yeah. If they are over the top like that, for sure. You're, you're more of a fan of, you know... big old T-I-T-T-S. Right? I guess. I prefer boobs. Yeah. Fucking... <laughs> that makes you like a seventh grade boy, you know what I mean? Oh fuck boy, yeah. <laughs> Stop coughing on the microphone. I'm sick. One of our, uh, I mean, probably our mo- our most commented video is the Hobson reaction uh, to Illmind Seven, the one where, where he's talking to God, and uh, this was about a year ago, and it starts with you coughing and me saying. Hey, Enough of that shit. <laughs> that interaction gets so much fucking love. <laughs> I don't know why. I love that. Because I'm nasty. Um, all right, so. Oh, and I'm slouching. Hey, Amy has been so fucking hard on herself recently. Um, can I talk about it or not? No. For real? <laughs> no, I don't care. Amy thinks that she's slouching and that she's a big fat fuck. Okay? <laughs> 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 To, to the point where, like, first of all, here's the, the, here's the truth about Amy. Amy is a thin woman, okay? A- anyone would say that she's a thin woman. Look at how this fucking sweater hangs off her, you know? She's, well, it's like a size triple extra large. She's a thin woman. Oh, oh, oh. No, the only reason that I've been nervous more so lately oh, is God. because I used to run around a lot at my old job. And at this job, I just sit, like, all day. And I don't have any exercise regimen or anything. So, so get off your fucking ass and play Pokemon Go with me. <laughs> it's too cold. No, it's not, though, you know? Yeah, it is. Um, here's the truth about you, though. Amy will obsess about being fat for, like, three weeks. And then on week four, she'll be like, oh, I'm not fat. That, that, that's going to happen. Okay. And what's funny was... Uh, um, oh, we have a comment here. We have... <laughs> Randall Begins says, yo, yo. It's your favorite Bernie Sanders, bro. LOL. How are you both doing? I'll tell you this. We're doing well, Randall. Um, you really can't read. I know what it says for real. I changed it. Okay. It's a supporter. Okay. But Bernie, bro, is the thing. Do you know what that is? Oh, it's one of his supporters? Yeah, it's like one of his supporters that like... And Randall isn't a Bernie, bro. Randall is someone who takes a face value and believes that he's going to do what he says, which I think is hilarious, you know? But Randall isn't a Bernie bro. A Bernie bro is one of the supporters that sort of like they're the other side of the Trump coin, mm-hmm. where where they're they're known to just harass other campaign supporters and just be kind of belligerent online. And Randall emphatically is not that. Gotcha. But yeah, yesterday, um, Pete Buttigieg uh, dropped out. That that uh, took me off guard. I was surprised. Um, I thought he was going to be in it to the end. So now it is um, uh, Joe Biden, Michael Bloomberg, Elizabeth Warren, Amy Klobuchar, and fuck, I think that's it. But hey, hey, Amy, who's not you? Amy Klobuchar, what the fuck are you doing? No one, I guarantee you, if you, if you showed... If you showed fucking a thousand people a picture of Amy Klobuchar, they maybe two people would know who she is. Two. Two. Uh. <laughs> I've we, seen a couple clips of her, but I probably wouldn't recognize her either. We have comments here. Randall says, ha, ha, ha. Bernie enthusiast. Cliff Jackson says, have you ever shit on yourself to get out of a ticket? <laughs> this Cliff, Cliff, uh, he and I went to the same school. And I saw that this was Cliff's status yesterday. Cliff... Um, have I ever shit myself to get out of a ticket? I've shit myself and I've gotten out of tickets separately, mm. not together. But you have. No, I haven't. No, you you made that with a girl to get out of a ticket. Yeah. Yeah, that's close. Um, <laughs> let's see. Uh, Cliff Jackson says, and also, will I be safe at the Trump rally tonight? Cliff, <laughs> Cliff why are you going to a Trump rally? Um, uh, uh, will you be safe tonight? 
I, I'd say it depends on what you're wearing, maybe. It, 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 say if you wear like a full suit of armor, you'll be good for sure, you know. But I, I don't know. Like, I, I would never, first of all, I would never go to any political gathering ever. Ever. Mm-hmm. Never. I would never go. And second of all, I hope everyone is safe always. <laughs> yes. I, I, I think you'll be fine. Um, all right. So we're going to watch this ad. I'm going to put it in the comments really quick first. So anyone watching this live can watch along with us. All right. Cliff says, why shouldn't I? It's a part of history. Um, I'd say this because people aren't going there to learn. No one goes to any political rally to learn. I think, um, you, you, you could go to observe. I'd say that if you go to observe and learn internally. Yeah. I think very few people will go to do the same thing. I think people go to, to listen to someone that they already believe in and already support. See the things that they, that they want to hear, you know? Mm-hmm. Um, but here we go. Uh, we're going to watch this Burger King ad. What a difference. The Whopper Day a 1, day it says. Because you can like put a McDonald's burger out forever and it stays the same. Yeah. So listen. <laughs> Th- that is the point, I think. However. That's I- gross to look at. I want to ask you a question. Does that ad make you want to eat at the BK Lounge? It doesn't make me want to eat at all. No. <laughs> I think, dude, that ad is so fucking gross to me. Who? The mold and stuff. I, I don't know, because like sometimes commercials that are bad are funny. That one to me is just gross. Yeah. I would love, dude. Uh, it would be so. F- I don't know why people get paid so much money to go there and pitch that idea and make those commercials. Yeah. That's crazy. Um, I could go there. Get it's so easy to make too. Get someone funny. This is the entire ad, right? Blank room. You have a chair. Get someone funny. Get a um, get Bobby Lee. Okay, get Bobby Lee. Get um, who else? Even someone. All right. Say if your budget is over a million or so dollars, get get Kevin Hart. Right. If it's lower, get someone who is not as popular but even funnier. Get Bobby Lee. Get mm-hmm. Theo Vaughn. Put the burger in front of them. They bite it and they just react in a funny manner. <clears throat> oh. It's so good, you know. Yeah. Bite it. Oh, that's fucking it. Mm-hmm. Okay. Make someone laugh briefly. Make someone think your food is good. Relate. And get the fuck out of here. Who? That was like a short horror film. The way it was like. That was like a short horror film. Wow. And guess what? Everyone fucking dies at the end. <laughs> that yeah. that is a disgusting. All right, so. Um, Randall begins, how weird would it be if people went to political rallies to find or date people? Yo, I mean, I'll tell you this. I have a friend who has been a guest on the podcast before. His name is Smiley Chris Halton. Chris is a flat earther and largely a conspiracy theorist. If I were Chris, that's what I would do. Okay. I would look for love at these places. Because that's where he'll find like-minded people. Uh, imagine. I right, actually not imagine. I, I want to ask you, if if I believe the Earth was flat mm-hmm. when we first got together, mm-hmm. would that be a a no for you, for me? Yeah, I would like try to argue with you for a while about it. I would try to like be like really. Yeah. And I would think you're less smart. Yeah. 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 It, it's um, 
I, I, I don't see what when there are lines in the sand like that, especially in an era, because like it in the past, dude. My my mom and dad never told the other who they voted for. People in the past kept all that shit inside. Yeah. Kept it all private. Yeah. If my dad believed the earth it's was like flat, taboo to talk he about. wouldn't talk about it until right. later on. Mm-hmm. Until the internet really stormed in. Right. So yeah, I just wonder like, um, R- Randall's point is like, uh, if people go there looking for like-minded people, I, I would say probably, mm-hmm. yeah. Because like, it might be hard to find, if, if you have a niche opinions, mm-hmm. you know, um, Sean P. Terry comments, dude, Amy is out. I thought he was talking about you. A- Hold on. Amy Klobuchar. Wow, it's true. The headline is Senator Amy Klobuchar. You know what? This picture. If you show me that picture, I- I've seen her talk. Yeah. If I saw that picture, I'd be like, oh, that's a school teacher. I, <laughs> I don't know who that is. Um, Senator Amy Klobuchar will drop out of the, of the presidential race and endorse Joe Biden. 15 minutes ago. Wow. Damn. Sean's quick. Um, Thanks for the update. Cliff says to Randall, me tonight. That, oh, he, oh, oh, he's looking for some, um, uh, some right-leaning uh, love, you know? Uh, <laughs> um, Cliff Jackson says Joe Biden is greater than Joe Biden. You know, I, I, I can't disagree. <laughs> I cannot disagree. That's awesome. Um, all right, so... Next video. First of all, Amy Klobuchar. The fact that Pete Buttigieg mm-hmm. dropped out before Amy Klobuchar is crazy to me. He was one of the front runners, and the fact that uh, that Warren is still in it is crazy to me. It's going to be Biden, Bloomberg, or Bernie, BBB. I mean, I don't think that any of those three are the, are the best option. But fuck, you know, my first and second choice has mm-hmm. already dropped out. All right, so this is a clip from World Star. Um, and I'm going to, hold on, I'm going to stop it right here. And I'm going to put the link in the live stream so you can watch it live as well with us. This video is called, Kept It a Buck. Dad explains why he still hangs out with Gay Son. Ready? Mm-hmm. Chilling with my pops, you know what I'm saying? Having a drink and shit like that. A lot of, you know, LGBT people, they don't really have their pops in their life, you know what I'm saying? But... My pops cool with me, you hear me? We good, you know what I'm saying? Say something to the people, pops. Hey, how y'all doing? You know, like I said, I don't give a fuck. I ain't the one sucking dicks. <laughs> <laughs> like I said. <laughs> Yo. He's yeah. so chill. I love that father. He's so cute. That's awesome, because that shows that not only does he support his son, he can fuck around and joke about yeah, it, you he's... know? <laughs> he didn't change their their relationship. That's humorous. fucking... Yeah. And I didn't mean to lick my cup, essentially. I just saw a bead of coffee there, you know? <laughs> yeah. um, that was cute. Yeah, I love that video because that's, uh, you know, I, I feel like um, a lot of people feel that they have to be super sensitive with one another about that kind of thing. But he doesn't. He's just, he's on the level. And that, I feel, is the definition of equality when you go fucking around like that, too, you know? What's that noise? That's my computer. Okay, just making sure. Let me make sure that we're still, uh, yeah, we're still going. All right. I hope that's not being picked up by the mic. My computer is kind of in overdrive right now. Um, Sean P. Terry comments, Julius Caesar-like plot to stop Bernie. That's uh, that's such a fucking ridiculous comment. That's a ridiculous comment because here's, here's the thing. Everyone pits Bernie as the guy who deserves it, but... He has just made everyone feel divisive about that because he has separated the Democratic Party. He has turned into a fan club. So either you're a fan of Bernie or you're against Bernie to Bernie supporters. When really, Amy's positions and Joe's positions are probably just more in common. They they, they probably have more of a a, a common ground. Because why why would a Democrat support the person who has sowed the most division within their own party? That's ridiculous. R- ridiculous comment. Um, all right, so here's a video uh, from YouTube. I'm going to post this in the comments as well. If you want to watch that live with us, this video is called. Oh, wow, it's been removed. What was it? 
It was a video that I hated, okay? <laughs> it was a video of a guy who was, in his mind, catfished by a girl. Okay. I'm, th- I'm going to search it on YouTube to see if we can find it. No, it's not here. Okay, so oh. it he was he put the camera in the girl's face as he met her, and to me, when he showed the real picture of her, in the real picture she had good makeup, and in real life she had bad makeup, and it was just like I don't know. I felt like he was doing it for the clicks, you know? Yeah, totally. So he. He brought the camera with him to the meeting? Well, it's, it's his phone. Oh, okay. So he saw her and was like, oh, no, no, no. And then videoed her. Are you 60? Sorry. I was, I, because to me, like, I don't even still really understand what the word catfish means, but I do. It's like when you you portray yourself as someone that you're not, obviously. Yeah, it's like this. Um, Or... Oh, maybe I'm, I like. Ne- I've never online dated really or anything like that. Never. I, n- no, because I went on like two Tinder dates and then we started dating. And like I feel like that's when Tinder just like started like happening. You know what yeah. I mean? And then so the only time I've seen like cat the word catfish and stuff is really in like my true crime documentaries and on Sweet Vicious yesterday. Yeah. So so yeah. So I was just trying to put the puzzle together in my uh, head cold brain. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But I got it now. Um, so it was just hating. Yeah. I, I went on Tinder dates as well. I, I went on one Tinder date um, while I was at a convention. Mm-hmm. And I'll be honest. My... The, the reason I was on there wasn't romantic, you know? Mm-hmm. I wanted a <laughs> liaison, okay? Liaison. Um, but, but what really happened was I just had a, a really nice conversation. Yeah. yeah, I'm just fucking around. Um... But, yeah, you and I started to, you know, get together. <laughs> Same to that. Yeah. So, catfish. Um, all right. So, we have another comment from Sean P. Terry says, people don't like that the guy that may get the most delicates and votes may not win. Some people don't, for sure. Randall says, I think he's revealed the level of corruption on the DNC side. Nope. He has uh, tricked you into thinking that. Uh, Randall says, man, I kind of want Burger King now. You're gross. Um, <laughs> you guys always have food props. Yeah. Randall, dude, Randall posted this picture. Um, <laughs> and uh, it looks like, and this might get gross, okay? Um, I'll, I'll, I'll bleep it out, okay? <laughs> but not, not digitally. Not for live, you can't. No, 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 watch. I'm doing it for live. Oh, I see. Randall posted a sandwich that looked like a yeast infection oh, on a slice of bread. Okay. Disgusting. Hold on. I'll, I'll wait more. A yeast infection on a slice of bread. Okay. Well, a yeast infection on a slice of bread. Okay. 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 Thank you. Dude, when I saw this picture, the consistency of it, uh, Randall, you should you should be in a fucking jail, dude. Okay. Um. Oh, uh, here we go. Uh, Sean says Sean P. Terry comments. I don't think it's entitlement. People just want to see it earned and then stolen to someone. People just don't want to see it earned and then stolen to someone that got less votes or, or delicates would be divisive. It's already divisive. It's already divisive. There's a way set for it to do it. And and if it has, if it gets contested, right, and it goes to the DNC, that's how it's set up. That's how it's been set up. It's the same as with the uh, fucking electoral college. Hillary won the popular vote. Unfortunately, Trump won the election. It's just how it is. It's just how it is. <laughs> Randall says, I never went on a date from an, an online service. And then he clarifies egg salad sandwich. And first, we, we got to get out, out of the comments for a little while. Um, because we're going to uh, alienate the people who are watching after the fact. But I usually Ran- like egg salad sandwiches. Fucking egg salad sandwich, Joe. <laughs> Seriously? Take an egg salad sandwich and throw that shit in the gap. Okay? <laughs> Damn, that, that, that's so gross to me. It's so gross to me. Um, here is a news article, okay? I'm going to read this to you. Okay. And I, I'll tell you this. I've had, a pro- I've had a problem reading today, you know? Yeah. I'm like, um, 
I'm like one of those kids in in seventh grade, right? Who the yeah, teacher calls on to read, and, and they're like, "I'm sick," and she's like, "You you, you don't sound sick," and he's like, "No, I, I'm sick," <laughs> and then he just leaves, um, because I can't read. You know, this is called it's it's Long Island, pizza yep. delivery worker beaten while on the job in Riverhead. Wow. Here's the article: a pizza delivery worker was ambushed, beaten, and robbed. <laughs> <laughs> Robbed of his pizza? Well, the, first of all, this is not funny, but I feel like whoever wrote this, putting ambushed, beaten, and robbed, you know? I'd say pick, it's a lot pick, of <laughs> picked, ambushed, or beaten, right? While on the job in, in Riverhead. Victim says he was beaten by three men who approached him on East Main Street around midnight. Whew. Police say the victim requested payment for the, the delivery. Mm hmm. And the men punched him in the face, took the pizza, and fled westboundward. That's it? They just took the pizza westbound. after they punched him in the face? Oh, my God. Riverhead Pizza respond. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? You can't read. <laughs> it's a pizza. Oh, my God. There's a special... <laughs> A special unit in the uh, New York <laughs> Police Department, Pulitza, <laughs> police for division. instances like Fuck. this. <laughs> oh my god. Uh, How fucking New York is the story? We gotta code 1400 Pulitza <laughs> on, the, on the scene. <laughs> oh my god. How uh, uh, <laughs> Riverhead Police <laughs> responded <laughs> in, oh god. in a search for suspects, but, but, but did not find Oh, they searched for the suspects, but, but didn't find they them. They didn't who, find them. Who ordered the pizza? Exactly. Did they order the pizza to like a fucking corner? Or did they, was it just what randos that was like, give me the pizza and he was like, pay them. He refused medical the treatment. The victim refused medical treatment. Wow, dude. So why is this even an article? That, yeah. <laughs> that's so fucking New York. Um, they couldn't find him and the guy didn't go to the hospital at the end. <laughs> Sean P. Terry says, did you guys meet on Tinder? I mean, <laughs> no. I'd say, per the story that we just told, no. You know? <laughs> Oh, um, Amy was working at Starbucks at the time I was working at Starbucks. I moved to San Diego on my fucking first day there. I went to Starbucks and I met her. And I was working. And tell them the uh, drink I ordered. It's kind of nasty. I, I would call this drink the uh, fucking uh, the car fuel drink. They don't even have this syrup anymore, but you used to get shots of espresso over ice with sugar-free peppermint. <laughs> No cream, nothing. Disgusting. I liked how it had a little bit of bite in both ways. It had a little minty bite and a little uh, roasty bite, okay? Um, Randall says, Pat should be the Judge Judy of food court. He'd throw me to the slammer almost every time. Mm -hmm. Italian pizza police. (laughs) Um, All right, so here we we go, here we go. Um, Also some news. Uh, This is a World Star video. I'm going to post it in the comments. If you're watching live and you want to watch along, click there. All right? Now we're going to watch this. This video... <coughs> Sorry. Is, I'm done. This video is 21 seconds long. Jesus, shut the fuck up for a second. It's called Coach Gets Fired Up. High school ba- baseball coach. I can't fucking read. High school baseball coach fired for profanity late speech after winning state championship. <laughs> Ready? He got fired for saying the F word? And they won? Fucking play it. That's how those kids talk, guaranteed, at yeah. school. That's not fair that he got fired, I think. It's just words. Oh, shit. We have Nigel Beckles in the comment. Nigel Beckles is an actor and rapper known as Corporal Askick. <laughs> he and I have worked together many times. I know that name, yeah. I fucking love this dude. <laughs> Nigel, hello. Hi. Um, Maybe it's because I have a mouth like a sailor, but well, I do not think he should have gotten fired. He wasn't even berating anyone. He was celebrating. Off rip from the article, no, from, from the video. To me, he should have been fired. Shouldn't have. Should not yeah, have been yeah. fired. 
you're first of all, that's that environment. And that's how those kids talk all fucking day with their friends. See? Whoever recorded that video and posted it is a bitch, though. <laughs> yeah, um, for sure. Here's the article. Uh, it's called "Petition Garner Support to Reinstate Seminole High Baseball Coach Fired for Cursing During State Champ Celebration." Mm-hmm. Weeks after the Seminole High baseball coach was fired after a video of his cursing during a celebratory speech after a team won a state championship for the first time in decades. Hey, all right, article writers, wrap it the fuck up, you run-on bitches. Yo, come on, dude. Um, a petition is garnering support to try to get him his job back. Um, a petition on Change.com has received more than 6,500 signatures in support of Coach Ken Brown being reinstated as the school's baseball coach. Channel 9 reported on Brown being dismissed as a coach school here and published the video in context that led to this firing here. It just links. Um, the petition, created by Seminole High alumna Viola Postley, Viola, you a real one, <laughs> states that 25 seconds and 42 words and 7 F-bombs <laughs> little of that fucking last part out. Uh, cost Brown his coaching job. Yes, Mr. Brown... Could have chosen better words. Hey, to me, stop it right there. You're being a fucking pussy. But she's acknowledging the other side, so they'll listen to her. Y- yeah, eh, that's probably true. That's probably true. You finish your quote. But I, li- but I like many athletes. What does that mean? Sick is when... Sick is a way of the news article copping out. Oh, I see. I feel she like that- spelled athletes wrong. And the news article is printing her quote while saying sick means that she spelled it wrong, not us. Gotcha. Okay, so. Stop that, yes, please. Mr. Brown could have chosen better words, but I, like many athletes before me, understand that when coaches make us work hard and actually win, they are excited like the win is their own because it is. I agree. I retract my statement. About what? I called uh, this, this person the P word. Oh, gotcha, gotcha. Because I, I think that the, the first sentence is kind of that way. But they wrote it around. Mm -hmm. Go on. In the video, Brown can be heard saying, you guys showed up, you fucking play the game, you played it right, you never effing panicked. He also points out one of the players has type 1 effing diabetes. (laughs) Quotes. This is what he's about. God. All right, so. Did he get his job back or what? Let's see. Let's see. Coach (laughs) Ken Brown. No updates, it looks like, yet. Fuck. Mm. We have so many comments here. Um, uh, Randall begins, says, sounds like a bunch of Bernie bros. <laughs> 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 Nigel That's says, funny. peace, bro, good to see you. No, he shouldn't, then it was funny as shit. I agree. The coach was just, you know. he was He's it, just being one of them. Yeah, he was in his zone. He was hyping them up. He was hyped. He was excited. Randall says, I agree. Shouldn't have been fired. Worst case scenario is suspended for like one game or a couple of days from school. I'd yeah, say, anything. I'd say here, because the video leaked. And first of all, whoever leaked it, bu- 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 bitch. That's the one kid that doesn't say the F word. Definitely. Either that or it's someone who, who was like, oh, our coach is lit. And someone else misinterpreted it. Right. You know? Um, I don't know. I just think that, I think that. Or like I, his mom saw it or something. At most. The coach should have to put out a statement saying that he was just hyped and that he's sorry through the social media. But the truth is, I don't even think that. I think people should just buck the fuck up. Yeah, for yeah. real. Um, let's see. Interesting. Um, here's a video uh, of... This is former... And actually current because it's being fucking uh, rebooted. Lizzie McGuire star, Hilary Duff. Um, confronts a paparazzi man for taking pictures of her seven-year-old kid. Oh, damn. I forgot how old she was. Hey, who, who are you here with? Who are you here with? I'm here with me. With you? Yes. Do you know any of the people on the team? No. Oh, can you stop taking pictures of the kids, please? It's legal. It's, it's making it's, me feel really uncomfortable. Well, you shouldn't feel uncomfortable. Do you want me to show you ID? I'm not asking for your ID. I'm asking you to stop taking pictures of our seven-year-old children if you don't know anyone that's here. But it's legal. I'm asking you, human to human, as a mother, if you don't know anyone here, can you please stop taking pictures of our children playing 
football. This morning. Well, I'm just telling you, it's not illegal. That's okay that well, you're saying. I'm, I'm taking pictures. I'm practicing photography. And Can I'm you practice here. it on another? On I'm another? I'm not here to scare you or anything like that. But you are. Your your paranoia is unwarranted. That's what I'm telling you. No, it's just an uncomfortability factor that these are seven-year-old children and you don't have a child here. What's that got to do with anything? Well, there are children, and we would like to protect them. So if you could take pictures well, and practice you, your photography somewhere you're else. Well, taking pictures of them is not it. Okay, what about other then I will just post this to my 15 million followers on Instagram and let people know how creepy it is that this is what you're choosing to do on your Saturday morning. And make all of our... Creepy to who? All of these parents with these no, kids. No, you're making it creepy because you're the one... <laughs> oh, man. All right, so... So he's definitely paparazzi? I'd say so, yeah. I mean, because like when I played like soccer and stuff and basketball, then like after the season or after a few games and stuff, there would be like people like that that like practice like sports photography and stuff, yeah. and we're just practicing, and there'd be like really cool action shots of me, and my mom would like buy them for five to ten dollars. I think that her being a celebrity is what changes it. Mm-hmm. I'm sure she's used to being followed all the time, mm-hmm. and since it's Los Angeles. Mm-hmm. I think that's a paparazzi for sure. True. And probably those people were like more like with the company, I guess. Maybe. I don't remember. But like, that's pretty badass that she said she's going to post them online. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I mean. Her voice is so like, me, 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 still. She's like so Lizzie McGuire still. Yeah. <laughs> to, to me, there's no profession less respectable than paparazzi. Mm-hmm. I... I don't know what would drive someone to do that. You're just harassing people for a living. Yeah. And on the one hand, these people, they did, they bought into this lifestyle. Paparazzi have exists, existed for decades. Mm-hmm. And they knew what they were getting into. And yet, paparazzi still, in all the videos that I've seen, there's no level of respect. It's just... <laughs> no boundaries, yeah. It, it's not treating people like humans. Because when you become a celebrity... You do lose privacy, and you go in aware of that. Aware of that, but I don't think that you should you lose your humanity. You know, yeah, like definitely. um, uh, I was listening to the H three podcast, and they were talking about how there's this this website, um, that will just somehow get the addresses of celebrities and just post the addresses online. That's so sketchy. That's so crazy to me because mm-hmm. there's a level of celebrity where, for instance, Drake. If you know where Drake lives, it doesn't matter. You can't get in, probably. Right, because it's so secure. Yeah, he has millions of dollars. Mm-hmm. If, say, say I become a screenwriter and I have a few movies made, I'm not going to have enough money that I could keep anyone out. Mm-hmm. But if someone, if someone really enjoyed one of my movies and wanted to see me, <laughs> Maybe they could. And, right. And that's that level of celebrity where you can't really protect yourself, but you're big enough that someone, even one person cares enough to, to find you. Definitely. That's scary. Yeah, because there's like news anchors and stuff that have like crazy fans that end up murdering them. And they're not like super celebrities, you know. Yeah. They're just like small town celebrities, you know. Yeah, it's... I think as a profession, it's shameful. Mm-hmm. Uh, Nigel comments... Um, they act like he pulled his dick out and it's not the team member with it. Oh, the uh, coach. Yeah, they do. You exactly, know, it's. Like... Th- think about this. Think about all the inappropriate, a- actual inappropriate shit that coaches have done. Coaches have done that. Yeah. Coaches have been fucking around <laughs> with, with kids, <laughs> with uh, college aged guys. It's for a high school coach to say fuck a few times. Not even in a negative way. Exactly. And plus, it wasn't in a negative way, especially is what gets me. Like, he was just stoked. Yeah. That's it. Even building up the kid who has type 1 diabetes, he said it in a way like, look what look what he did. Mm-hmm. He he has this and still he won. Yeah. yeah. Damn, that, that really gets me heated. Uh, Randall says, what are your thoughts on Dan DiDio let go from DC? Dan... Uh, Dio, and I'm not even sure I'm saying his name right. Um, he he's a legend. He was he's been in this longer than I've been creating comics. Uh, he's been a staple of DC Comics. But the, the truth is, I'm not caught up. I don't look into this stuff anymore. I avoid reading 
most of the stuff that comes out of Marvel and DC Comics just because it's not my field, you know? It's not what I do. I don't write for Marvel and DC. Um, I've never gotten contacted by DC ever. Um, so I really have no opinion on what they do uh, business-wise, you know? Um, I hope that... He seems like a nice guy. I, I, I've never met him. I don't know him at all. Uh, he seems nice, though, and I do wish him the best. Uh, Marco Lopez comments, Paparazzi existed back in the 1800s as well, except they were sketch artists, and they had to sit and sketch the famous people real quick. <laughs> Man, the drama back then. Of course, I made all this up. You know what, though? <laughs> That's fucking hilarious, because that would be true, you know? Um, pap- like little snapshot sketches? Paparazzi back then is like some guy who like sees a famous person and then just goes describe him to somebody else, you know? Mm-hmm. That's that's all, that's all you got. Like, oh, he was wearing... Because people were always interested in like upper class, you know, yeah, debutantes and stuff like that. Yeah. Yeah, the uh, paparazzi from like fucking 1876 comes up and goes like, <laughs> he, he's wearing a long uh, coat and a big trench coat. You know what I'm saying? You know, like, just, <laughs> just, yeah, just one of those big hats, you know? I feel like everyone back... In the 1800s, were one of those top hats where it's like a short brim and a fucking huge. Oh yeah. What well, were they, they doing? like write a list. Like if they, paparazzi would in the 1800s would be like, okay, saw so and so at this barber shop at this time. Blah, blah, blah. Oh yeah, come next time. Right, right. Yeah, come stay at the barber shop. Yeah. For three months. Right. To see if he gets a haircut again. Mm-hmm. You know, to see if um, uh, Emily Dickinson comes in and gets her haircut. Exactly. You know, um, Nigel comments. I'm not gonna lie. I'm not comfortable with just with someone just snapping random pictures of my child, especially if no one knows this person. Yeah, man, and, and that's what I feel that these people, these celebrities, uh, they lose. You know, like they lose the right to not only their privacy but their children's privacy, and that's in some ways they bought into it, but, but in other ways, if I were them, I I, I would protect that my children's privacy. More than my own, yeah. like, like Hillary Duff is doing. Yeah, what's the Eminem bar in um, um, uh, the way I am? He, he goes, um, oh, I, I gotta look it up. Eminem, he goes, and out some people with like my... they like celebrityism and they like strive to be a celebrity, but some people just really like the art of like acting and they just you know love to act and they don't want to be like famous, yeah. <laughs> Here's the song. Um, all right. So the Eminem song, he goes, um, at least have the decency in you to leave me alone when you're freezing me out in the street when I'm eating the feet of my daughter to not come to speak to me. Remember that? <laughs> I remember that, yeah. <laughs> That's exactly it in a nutshell. Um, the, the best, though. And we won't spend too much time on this because Chris D'Elia reacted to no, this on his podcast. But... I fucking love this video of Quentin Tarantino and the paparazzi interaction. Oh, God. Uh, have you seen this? I feel like I saw it on his podcast. So. Yeah. Outside you t- of a Starbucks, right? When you type in Quentin Tarantino, <laughs> the first result is Quentin Tarantino. The next is Quentin Tarantino Academy Award. And the next suggestion is Quentin Tarantino slash the cameraman. This video has 4.9 million views. I'm surprised it isn't 400 million. Yeah. This video is <laughs> too good. Yeah, I'm missing out. Quentin, first of all, he's so fucking riled up. Mm-hmm. He's so pissed immediately. It's just great. He just wants to get a fucking coffee. I'm going to, first of all, I'll just pop out really, really quick. I'm going to put this in the comments for everyone watching. If you have not seen this, dude... <laughs> Please fucking watch this. All right, I'm playing it right now. What's going on here? How's it going? Hi, how are what's, you? What's going on here? I'm just, what's going on here? What's going on here? Put that down. What's going on here? What are you doing? What are you doing? Do you, do you need to talk to me? Just for uh, just for the. What are you doing? Hey, don't do that. Don't do that again. Go. Oh, what? Hit me. Go. Oh, go. Go for it. Go for it. No, no, go. Go, 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 go. Go for it. No, I can't go for it. Yeah. Go. Hit me. Go. You started it. Oh, I'm starting it? Yeah. Are you... Oh, you so you're actually not just a guy from around here. You're actually go, a paparazzi go, 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 go. guy? Nah, I can't do it. 
Yeah, you know you can't mm. do it. Yeah, because you're filming. Yeah. But if that was off, I'd be whipping your ass up and down this street. Yeah, go. <laughs> How is he not gay? Oh, man. <laughs> you know? Yeah. The way he talks and is. He's like, what's going, what's going on here? What's going on here? They stood on him for so long. I feel like he would be the best drag queen. <laughs> Am I wrong? Like, oh my god, dude, that's dude. First of all, that's so fucking funny. <laughs> Amy and I went to that drag queen bar, and I'll say this: he would fit right he fit in. Fit right the fuck in. Hello, bitches. Yeah. He'd say. <laughs> What's going on here? He'd say. Oh my god. Whipping your god, ass up dude. and down the curb. He'd say. Yo, that video is so fucking funny to me. I love it. Oh my god. He's, he's like so like. So talk. He's very sassy. And then if he went to fight, he'd be like. Yeah, I wonder if he's, is he scared to fight? Because he did slap him. Or is he scared of losing all that money, you know? No, he was scared to be in trouble for sure. But yeah. I don't think like, he's not, he's not like, you know, he can't fight probably. Like he no. can't box or anything. No, probably not. I mean, if it came but, down to know. him versus the cameraman. I don't know, because yeah, I can't see the cameraman. But, yeah, I, I don't see him as a fighter. No, I, me I, either. Yeah, I see him as a, a wordsmith. Yeah. He's a brain, yeah. yeah. Uh, Randall says, Pat, if you had the opportunity to write any of the DC characters for DC, what character would you like to write? I'd say Supergirl, probably. Supergirl or Batman. Nice. Um, all right. Uh, one more. I want to watch... Um, one more. Quentin Tarantino. I want to watch this bit... Um, where he hold on oh, which one though which one which fucking one um there is one where he speaks to a horrible reporter and one where he speaks to a woman critiquing him for the violence in kill bill which one this one blood from he's so crazy <laughs> for those who haven't seen this I hope this doesn't get claimed. I'll probably have to split it up in the uh, video. This is Quentin Tarantino talking to... What the fuck is this guy's name? Um, oh, Chris and Guru Murth Murthy. He's in, I think, three viral celebrity walk-off videos. He's... It seems hated, you know? For blood. And that's the revenge bit. I mean, is, is that essential? Mm -hmm. To make well, him in, a hero. In, well, in this, well, in, well, in, uh, in in the case of uh, in in the, in the case of lay, uh, laying waste to a genocidal uh, <laughs> uh, uh, um, uh, white racist uh, uh, class uh, in, in the institution of slavery, yes, that would be the reason to do it, as opposed to just uh, a historical story where this happens and this happens and this happens and this happens and that happens. So you can't be surprised by the controversy that's that's come along with it. Well, you can't. I don't think you can actually make a movie about slavery in America that it's not going to be controversial. Are you very disappointed by some of the reactions, Spike Lee? Especially? Oh, I couldn't be happier with uh, the reaction to this movie. It's been fantastic. It's good publicity, I suppose. But well, I mean... no, 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 no. It's it's creating a nice debate. Even the, the people who don't like the film, all right, uh, are actually we're. I am responsible for people talking about slavery in America uh, uh, in a way that they have not in, in 30 years. But you, you must care very deeply that this doesn't become, you know, a film that stands out from the rest of your body of work as one that is, you know, trashed by more people. Or anything. It's not trashed you know. by more people. You know, that, what, you're, what you're saying is not correct. It's no, not no, trashed I'm, by more people. <laughs> Waving the hand, dude. Um, he, if, I feel like if he didn't go down this career path he would have went down like a murderer path he seems I'll say this because in both of the, the, the videos that we've watched I think that he is in the right but he seems it's very how defensive he says it. yeah he's very defensive from jump I think but yeah I, <laughs> and also no one says alright more than Quentin Tarantino alright I'm not saying it is. I'm saying, that, are, are you concerned? I mean, well, no, that guy's a stuck-up piece right of now. shit. You're first about, of all, you know, I'm talking okay. about there is the actually a dialogue going on about slavery right now that has not been happening at all. 
It's a subject people are afraid to talk about. And now because of this movie, people aren't afraid to talk about it. People are talking about it. Uh, somebody likes the movie. And they write a review on uh, this. So angry, you know. Now where you actually have <laughs> He's like internet, trying to control actually his breath, but he can't. Can it's just publicly, escaping him. Which was not him. the case before. So now somebody actually writes uh, a review for the movie and they like it. And you read the comment sections. And some people who don't like it attack them. You know, and say they're saying. You, uh, somebody who doesn't like the movie writes a blog about it. And the people who, who like the movie uh, uh, hold them to task. Of the <laughs> this video is not on two times speed, by the way. Yeah. The, I the swear comment to God, that's an actual, he's crazy. That's a dialogue. I can't. Let me ask you about... Uh, violence i mean you said you know everyone knows you make violent movies you like violent movies mm -hmm. why do you like making violent movies because he can't uh, be a murderer just kidding <laughs> i don't know it's, it's like asking judd apatow why do you like making comedies you, you just get a kick out of it or you just enjoy it well it's it's it's, it's i i think you know it's it's a it's a uh i i think um i think it's good cinema i consider it good cinema you know it's it's uh um you sit there and you sit there in a movie theater <laughs> when these cathartic violent scenes happen. I'm talking about the cathartic violent scenes. I'm not talking about uh, you know. There's two types of violence in this movie. There's the uh, there's the brutality of uh, the violence in the in the day. Skip ahead a little bit to yeah. Uh, this video is long. Too long, yeah. It's a big part of your all of your movies, and it's you know, and it's it's an enjoyable part of your movies for so many people, and that that's why I'm. Talking about this because you know it's a very sensitive time at the moment. I mean, the vice president is talking to people in the movie industry today mm -hmm. about violence and response. And you know to the, where I stand on so, it, which, which is that there's no relationship. And yes, that, but you haven't said why you think there's no relationship. It's you none of your damn you business what I think about that. <laughs> well, it's my job to ask you why you think. And that, I'm you're, saying you're very no. <laughs> and I'm shutting you down. But you have a responsibility as a filmmaker, surely, to. Explain a little bit. No, I don't have any responsibility to you to explain anything I don't want to. Well, not to me, but to your to your viewers, to your fans, you know, to people who they know care exactly, about what they it is know, that you're doing. They know where I'm coming from. <laughs> and I have explained it. And I have explained even what you're talking about. I'm just not giving it to you. Why? Because I don't want to, because I've done it already. I have explained this many times in the last 20 years. I just refuse to repeat myself over and over again because you want me to. For you and your show, you're, you're, and your ratings. I, well, no, it's, it's not about our ratings. It's, it's no, no, it is. It is about you. Want me to say it for you, for your show, this show right here, yeah. right now. <laughs> uh, uh, well, look, this is a news the program, it's a film program, so we explore serious themes. That's the difference. Exactly. You know? yeah. um, <laughs> <laughs> all right, all right. He's gonna slap him. Oh my god. Bitch slap him to be specific. Fuck. Um, Randall says, "I swear, I saw a picture of Quentin and his wife." Right after they got married, he's a wife. The wife did not look happy, like she got talked into doing something that she didn't want to do. I mean, <laughs> oh god, I don't want to put that on him. Um, apparently, Quentin is a hardcore Elvis Presley impersonator. It helped him get the money he needed for Reservoir Dogs. That's amazing. I could see that. I, I mean, I think I could probably see him more as a drag queen, like you said. You know, Elvis is pretty close. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Elvis is like a. Uh, Kind of, kind of like slightly more butch drag queen. Yeah, you know? exactly. He he pretty much like wears a white velour suit, so mm -hmm. he is with the big hair. More than halfway there, yeah. but yeah, we are about an hour right now. Um, gonna wrap up, I think. Do you, you have any closing topics? Any um commentary on Tarantino, on Burger King, on a uh, Coach Ken Brown's job? I hope he gets his job back. You too. Um, no, that's it. Thanks for joining us, you guys, on my day off. Right. Oh. My leg hurts so much right now from folding that Sitting little in a bitch weird up. Way. Oh yeah. Um, listen, we, this was a fun episode. Um, you know, fucking Bon Voyage, Bon Voyage. Um, damn, you looking good. Thanks, lover. I feel like shit. You do? Yeah, I'm sick. But you don't. You didn't feel like shit before. Do you feel worse now? Well, I took Advil this morning, but it's worse than yesterday. Yeah. Yeah, Yo, you are so. Not fat, though. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Know? you. Love Thanks you. so much. I love you, too. Happy that I met you <laughs> on Tinder. Um, <laughs> and um, One thing I'm thankful for Starbucks for. Thank you for being in my life, Amy. You. You're welcome. It's my pleasure. My actual pleasure. I'll tell you this. Next time that you wake me up, I want you to do it with nothing but love, okay? I did it with love. Just love. Excuse me. Nothing That's how but I love. love. I don't want loudness. I don't want aggression. 
I want fucking love. My dad used to take a piece of tissue, right? He would roll up the end, and he would tickle my nose and ears with it. That's what I'm going to do tomorrow. And he would call it the bunny. Yep. And the game from, like, sixth grade, the end of high school, maybe even into college, wake me up with the bunny, I would catch it, throw it behind the bed, and then I will get up. Oh, my God. Did you have, like, a mountain of tissues behind your bed? Oh, yeah. <laughs> my mom probably thought I was fucking beating off for so oh long. Oh, my God. That's But so really, funny. it was my dad waking me up with the bunny. That's how I'm going to wake you up tomorrow. I didn't masturbate at all until I was 18, you know? Oh. I hit you with that TMI. But Thank fuck. Thank you so much. Who, who cares, you know? I already knew that, so. Yeah. The, you know the, what the first video that it happened to was? No. Oh, very good. I, I don't want to explain myself, but it was it was out of Nicole Smith. <laughs> Not in her like E days, in her old movie days, you know? Yeah, yeah. It just it just suddenly happened for me. Just suddenly happened. Couldn't believe it. Couldn't believe it. Couldn't believe it. But listen, I appreciate you all. Thanks for watching. Give me some Robotessin. Space between.